For many of us, Christmas is our favourite season. A time for families and for giving. But not if you're in debt. We're now going to break the door down. Named on a High Court writ. We're outside now if you could bring the keys up. Or about to be evicted. And the battering ram. In this Christmas special... Britain's favourite High Court enforcement agents... We're here to repossess the property today. ..grapple with difficult situations. I'm afraid it's past that stage now. ..and moral dilemmas. There has to be a way for me to get into a boat. ..before everything shuts down for the holidays. Christmas doesn't affect this process. ..because even when it's Christmas... There is no longer your house. You are boss now. I know it. ..if you can't pay... They'll take it away. According to figures from the Ministry of Justice, there were over 10,000 landlord repossessions in the run-up to Christmas 2014. Charities predict that more than 120,000 children in England will wake up homeless or in temporary accommodation on Christmas Day this year. Steve and Ben Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel around the south of England, taking control of goods to cover debts and repossessing homes. Over the Christmas period, evicting families, especially with children, is so much more difficult. They've got the weather to deal with, the council to deal with, so for them it's stressful, and for us from being the other side, because we have to enforce it. It's, you know, it takes its toll. It's the first morning back after New Year's Day. Today, Steve and Ben are on their way to Crystal Palace in South London with a writ to evict a young family. Yemi Kehindi, don't know anything about them, actually. Simply Section 21, End of Tenancy. The landlord has plans to redevelop the property and wants the tenants out. The eviction was being processed by the county court, but to speed it up, the landlord has obtained a writ from the High Court to gain possession immediately, without notice to the tenant. As the team arrive, a woman and child are leaving the house. Oh, she might be the one we need. She might be. 27. What's her name? Yemi. Yemi? And this is Yemi. Hello there. We're High Court enforcement. It's the family they're instructed to evict, Yemi Kanani and her seven-year-old daughter. The yeah. landlord has gone to the High Court. Yeah. And the High Court has issued this today to be served. So we are going to repossess the property today. OK, well, I will send my daughter. Yeah, that's no problem. Do you want to, do you want to go down to there? Go. Two minutes. We'll wait. We'll wait. Come back. No problem. While she's gone, Steve and Ben enter the property to change the locks. There's a lot of movement there. No, it's not, is it? It's getting a little... Uh, a few minutes later, busy. Yemi returns. Got one somewhere. Uh, no, be, be the reality of eviction has hit hard. No, Don't... I will give you the letter. Honestly? Yeah, I, they didn't send me any letter. They put, and then I go to. Just, I will give just, you. Just, just relax. I will give you. Let, sh, 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 just relax, calm yeah. down. Just calm down. Yeah, okay. because I didn't accept any letter. Okay. I just the court to give you. I will give you the court. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going down. We'll come back upstairs yeah. in a second. Yemi knew the house was due to be repossessed. But the council told her to wait for an eviction letter from the county court before making plans to move. OK, I, I know the council... I know what this is. OK, OK. Catch your breath, catch your breath. Calm down, calm down, come on. Just don't go be there. You're fine. I'm going to come in, OK? OK, yeah. That's fine. We'll come in, I'll sit, we'll sit down and we'll talk. Yeah? Yeah. 
Yemi and her husband Taz came to the UK from Ethiopia as refugees in 2004. Taz found work and they now have citizenship. They rented the flat unfurnished a year ago and turned it into a family home. Right, my name's Ben. Okay. Okay. So what's happened is the paperwork yeah. that you've probably got here from the county courts yeah. has been transferred to the high court. Yeah. With the high court, yeah. there's no notification. Yeah. Okay. So the la that's the, the, the route the land will show to take. The council Ben's brought the eviction notice. Uh, you didn't give. Yeah, you, you don't get it till we arrive. That you didn't give for, no, for no, the no. man, and then that's... you have to send or so. No, 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 no. That's for the county court. We're from the high court. There's, diff there's two courts in the country. Because we don't know. Okay, calm down. I'm yeah. just going to explain it to you. Yeah, we don't know okay. nothing. The situation now yeah. is obviously that we are here to evict you today. To out, you mean? Yes. Okay. We give you an hour. Hour? Yeah. You don't need to take, or you just need to take a bag. Medication, yeah. passports to get what you need to get by for the next and few days. And there's a restaurant. And then the, the rest. Yeah. Um, you make arrangements with the landlord, who you have his number. Yeah. Just pack a bag, get yourself together, yeah. and we'll go from there. All comes a bit of a shock. Um, she didn't expect us today. Luckily, she was running late. Otherwise, uh, we would have had to have changed the locks, and that's it. The family have always paid rent on time. Okay. But the landlord has made his decision. We pay him everything. We didn't miss any bill. It just happened like that. The family have nowhere to go. Their only hope is to apply to the council for emergency accommodation. It's one day, even give one day, even for us. It just come in and then you to park and then to leave the house. No. It's, it's like that? Is it life like that? No. That. We just, we don't know. We take which one and it's my kids. We don't know. The flat is full of furniture and possessions. But Ben's instructed Yemi to pack just one bag of essentials. You know, I'm shaking and then I don't know what's going on. I'm so stressed. How are we doing, Yemi? The hour is up. You don't need to take all of but Yemi still isn't ready to leave. That's why we, we think because you, you're going to lock it. Yeah, but you can come back and get the rest of your stuff once you've got somewhere. Yemi is worried that she may not get back into the flat again. And there's something missing. Her husband. Where's your partner? That's why he's coming from train. On the train? Yeah, it's, oh. no, it's already maybe soon. Okay. Yemi's husband, Tez, arrives. Tess. Hi, how are you doing? He's rushed home from work. Go up and see Yemi. Yeah. You understand the situation, yeah? We were to we were told to leave. Yes. And uh, I spoke to him. Who? The landlord. Okay. The landlord said I want to demolish the house. Yeah. We had a contract, one year contract. Okay. We don't have any payment hours. No, yeah. I don't know why he sent you today. And I spoken to him, and he said, okay. He gave us a couple of uh, weeks. Yeah. That's his property, we know it. Of course. But yeah. it is a timing. Yeah. We need to have another accommodation. That's why what I've asked Yemi to do is pack a bag. Yeah. And, you know, to get down the council. Should we go up and see her? No, right. We, we need to start making a move now. Tess is an admin assistant, but despite working full time, he doesn't earn enough to pay full rent. The family receive housing benefit, which has made finding a new home tough. We couldn't find another property. 
terrain. Landlords do not accept half uh, council payment, half top up. They want full. And now the housing price has gone up. They want someone to pay the highest. And we couldn't get uh, a council uh, 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 property uh, that's hard at the, at the moment. So we are out. Ben advised Jemmy to pack just the essentials and to come back to collect the rest later. If you've been living there five years, you don't want to take five years' worth of stuff in the time frame that we're there. You want to be looking at taking just enough to last you a few days till you can get your feet back on the ground again, get yourself settled. We do. Now, what we told us to do is what we need to do. And then you just need to get to the council. That's the main now thing. Now we have to go to the council, take it down. Let's take the stuff down. Have you got the medicine for our medicine? That's important. Yemi and Tez are finally ready, but now they have another problem. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of becomes a bit of a nightmare because you think to yourself, well, where are you going to put all of this? <laughs> Yemi has filled 13 bags. They can't take them all to the council. You could have left it in the flat. That's what we told the lady told the lady upstairs. You could leave the stuff here, take an emergency we'll patch for a few days, and then make arrangements to come and take the rest. The moment you might not think thinking straight. <laughs> okay. You need to look after this because someone else will take it. The family are now homeless. While Tez decides to stay with the bags, Yemi heads to the council in search of a bed for the night. But they're facing an uncertain future at a difficult time of year. The average British family spends £835 per household over the festive season. And one in six UK families borrow money to cover Christmas expenses such as food, drink and presents. A couple of weeks before Christmas. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and his son Ben are in Chessington, Surrey, to enforce a writ of possession. The writ orders them to repossess a house on behalf of the owner. They've been warned that this job could become volatile. If a tenant gets arsy with me, I'll just take it. I just don't react to it. Just go straight past me. I'm not interested in their opinion of me, or the job, or the writ, or the system, or anything. Michelle Walker is evicting her ex-husband, Gavin, from their former marital home. The High Court writ means the agents have the power to evict him immediately. Ex-wife Michelle is already there, waiting. And Michelle, the locks and where Michelle is standing outside of. She's not supposed to be there. Thingy. They can't resist it, can they? No. He's obviously not there, that's why. Look, she's Gavin Walker is a cab driver, and it looks like he may be out. Morning. How are you doing? Locksmith. Yeah. Steve. Aware that he could come back any minute, Paul is keen for ex-wife Michelle to stay out of sight. Are you going to make yourself scarce just in case he comes back now? No, no, that's Michelle and Gavin bought the house together over 20 years ago. They've been separated for 12 years. And while Gavin remained in the property, Michelle moved to temporary accommodation. They've been fighting just over ownership of the house now. ever since. No, no, that's OK. I'm not going on your case. You just, if he comes back, <laughs> there's a history that goes back a long, long way that he's been kicked out of the house. So she's now evicting him. 
my guess is that the bloke will turn up, he may well explode, but we'll talk him down. We've never had slip. The house is well known to the local locksmith. This, this, is, this is going on and on and on. This is the fourth time so many people have drilled these locks. It's been ridiculous. This is the third or fourth time I've drilled up the locks here. The divorce has now been finalised. Gavin has been ordered to leave the house by the county court. He was given 28 days to move out, but he's refused to leave. So Michelle has taken it to the High Court to get him evicted today. He's not there. No. Well, young man, open the door. Wherever he is, he's a cab driver. He's not yes. going to be local, is he? Yes, I know. He's going to be in central London. All the activity has attracted the attention of a neighbour. She's just being nosy. Hi there, can I help you? About 15 minutes if you could not be doing anything. We're going to do anything we can, oh, so don't worry. Bless. <laughs> yeah, happy Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yeah, happy Christmas to you all. Where's Michelle then? She doesn't need to be here. Gavin Walker could arrive at any moment. It'd be nice if we were inside looking out when he does get here, but there's nothing you can do. We've got a high court writ. We have authority to break into the property and repossess it. There is nothing at all that he can do to stop us. We just need to be ready for him when he does get here. Should he be upset enough to step out of line? Still drilling. We're in. It's taken 20 minutes and the doors finally open. Hello? Thank you very much. All clear, Paul. A few minutes later, Gavin Walker arrives. Yeah, that'll be him. <sighs> Mr. Walker? Good morning, Mr. Walker. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. We're here to repossess the property today. And we have already gained access. We'll show you the paperwork so that you're happy with everything. Excuse me, do you mind not stepping? Yeah, mate, you're, I've with, got white carpet. So. Yeah, but with all due respect, sir, it's no longer your house. What? So you don't have to worry about that at the moment. Uh, how long have I got to clear my stuff out? Uh, you only need to take your emergency stuff, medication, clothing for a few days. We'll give you an hour or so. They're changing the locks. Can I go other... on that, please? <sighs> how long do you want to give him? An hour? We'll give you an hour to take the stuff that you need now. If you need to collect your paperwork, we'll help you sort, you know. I'd like, I'd like more. Well, I'd like to myself. I'd like more time. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't get it. We're going to be here for an hour from now. And that's it. We'll then lock the premises. <clears throat> if we consider that people are likely to become very angry, we'll be looking for ways to break the ice and to lead them away from the subject in hand. Do you want a cup of tea? I'll make you a cup of tea. Will that help? A cup of tea usually helps. It helped me. Anything like the, to distract them from the main issue so that we can establish a rapport with them. I know you're really stressed at the minute. I'm, I'm not stressed. I'm, I'm, not, I'm no. not stressed at all. Okay. I'm just... I, I know you're trying to think. I'm yeah. thinking. All right, I understand. I don't get stressed. Uh, stress is, doesn't come into my life. Okay, a bit like me then. Yeah. Yeah. Stress isn't worth worrying about. No, you're right. Yeah. He's not exploding, he's not shouting his mouth off and all the rest of it, but he's just seething. Underneath, he's right on the edge. Well, by all means, speak to your solicitor. Yeah, yeah, I've got to. Yeah, yeah of course, I yeah. I, I, yeah. This, is, uh, this situation is untenable. 
and it's not fair either. So there has to be a way for me to get this revoked. Not to my knowledge. But Gavin's not taking Paul's word for it. He calls his lawyer. Is there anything under English common law that could totally revoke this high court order? The solicitor suggests there is one last chance to overturn it. Yeah, she wants me to go down to the court office yeah. at Guildford and ask uh, to get this set aside. Um, have you come across that sort of, uh, you have? It's never, it's never, never worked. If you want to do that, feel free. We won't grant anybody access to the house. Will she we... get access to all, Bob? She will, and if you let me finish, don't interrupt me. We will hold on to the keys until you've come back to me and said the court can do nothing. Right, OK, fair okay? enough. OK? When you come back later, yeah. it's going to be a flying visit. I'm not going to be here for two or three hours. Right. So clear the decks yeah. as fast as you can, then get your ass down to Guildford. I'll still be Paul's calculating that the writ will be upheld and that the eviction will go ahead. He hopes that letting Gavin go to court will ease him out of the house more smoothly. He's OK. He's as good as gold now. You know, we reached the turning point. The best of friends. Yeah. The team updates ex-wife Michelle, who's waiting in a nearby service station. He's packing his stuff up. He has started packing, is he? Sorry, I have little faith. I've just had so much in this man. We have to let him play this game. Right, okay. So at the end of the day, when Paul comes back, it'll be to take your stuff and then go. Paul's taking a risk to get Gavin out peacefully. If it goes wrong, Michelle may not get her wish to be back in her former home for Christmas. It's now nearly nine o'clock. Ex-wife Michelle has been waiting at a nearby service station all day in the hope that she can get into her former home tonight. Paul has finally got some news. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Sorry Paul. it's taken so long. I know it's been a long day. It's been fraught for you. OK, your ex-husband went to court, as he said he was going to do. The court rejected everything. and He's gone through his ritual dance. It's all come to pass, exactly as I said it would. But he's now run his court. OK? I'm pleased because I feel like Christmas has come early. OK, right. so I'll go turn the lights on right. okay. and wait for him. Right. He's just got to load his stuff up and go. Right, right. thank you very much. OK, then. Paul wants Gavin to be in and out in half an hour. Hello, Gavin. But Gavin's worried about something completely different. Oh, it's my, it's my house. That, to me, that's abuse. That's shocking, really. Just come in, tra traipse in. It's not your problem now, Gavin. Can we cut to the chase? What do you want to do now? I've got to go to my mum. My mum is furious with my, with my ex-wife. Yeah. OK? My yeah. mum's got dinner for me. Yeah. Oh, the reason, I suppose, for defendants finding it very difficult to understand that this is D-Day and there is no going back is because it's life as they've known it for years. OK, really critical this is, for your benefit, not for mine. Go on. What's here that you don't want your wife got, to get at? I've got files in there that are for me, not yeah. for her. I, we haven't got time now, because you've got to go back to Ashford. I'm not concerned about me going back to Ashford. I'm just concerned that I'm going to have to give the keys to your wife tonight. So we need to get out of here what you need to get out. I'm, I'm, Paul, I haven't got enough time, Paul. I can't not give her the keys back tonight. Gavin's still not willing to give in easily and tries once more to delay his eviction. That's fine. If you, if you want to meet me here tomorrow... But afternoon. she's going to have the keys in the meantime. No, cos she'll be in no, here, No, I'm sorry, that's, that's, the, she'll, that's the way she'll it's She'll be going. rifling. You don't realise what you're dealing with. I do realise what... This woman is mentally ill and yeah. she is out to f absolutely put me in the grave. OK, well, get the files now. I'll help you carry them down and we'll get them in your cab and away. I can't believe you let them in the house with their boots I'm sorry. Gavin, it's not your house. It's, it's her problem. It's not. It's my house. But, Gavin, I'm here. If you want half an hour, I'll help you carry the stuff out, but it's got to end tonight. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I shall lose my temper shortly, and then he might kick off. I'm not going to be messed about. Two hours later, and Gavin still shows no signs of leaving the house. I need to be away. I'll be ready in about another 30 minutes. No, I want to go now. I'm going to lock the property. You're going to have to go. Paul's now worked an 18-hour day. Case put down. I need to be away now. Gavin, I'm sorry. Go go. But he still helps Gavin load his documents into the taxi. I can't need paints and stuff. And my tracksuit gear and all that. Gavin, I'm going in five minutes. That's it. There's a lesson to be learned in this. People will always take kindness as weakness. So we helped him out this afternoon, and now he thinks we're a walkover. Gavin, come on, I've had enough. Well, I don't care. I've got a home to go to, and it's two hours away. It's now 11 p.m. Gavin finally leaves the house. Court paperwork. Bedtime reading. Paul heads off to look for Michelle. After 12 long years of fighting, she's finally got possession of her home. I don't think you should stay here tonight, personally. I think you're going to be just stressing yourself out. No, I'm all right. Sure? I've, got, I've got like a DVD and I'm going to light the fire. I've got some, I've got some wood sorted out and a, a glass of stick. wine and I'm going to chill. She'd been excluded from her house for 12 years and he'd done absolutely everything in his power to mess her about with the court situations. And we had him evicted when he was least expecting it. <laughs> Christmas is a make or break time for retailers, with some making as much as one fifth of their annual profit in December alone. But with business costs rising year on year, many shopkeepers run into trouble just before the Christmas spending rush begins. So, what are we going to now? We're actually going to yeah. an off-licence where there's arrears of rent. Paul, Steve and Ben are in Waterlooville, Hampshire, to visit an off-licence. They're here to collect a debt for a landlord who is owed nearly £6,000 in rent. The rent was due ten weeks ago, and a further payment is due in a couple of weeks' time, on Christmas Day. If the rent isn't paid today, Paul has the right to seize goods to cover the debt. Leaving. Hello, sir. Leaving. Are you the boss here? No, I'm working here. You're working here? Yeah. Is the boss available, please? No, no. Are we here to collect the rent or take everything away? Rent? Yeah. So I see. You know it, you don't mind? The, the amount that's outstanding yeah. is. £5,219.76, right. which no was worries. due on the 29th of September. OK, don't ask me that. Uh, where do you come from? Uh, for the bailey for... I'm for... the bailey, yes. Kareem, the shop manager, calls the owner. Yeah, Hello. Hello. I'm a certificated bailiff. I've come to collect the rent. It's £5,926. Well, how long do you want? Half an hour? And are you going to pay the whole amount now? In one week time. Can you can you can you pay half of it now and half in a week? I'm sorry, you know, we can't do just like that. It's a difficult thing. Can you give us one week time, please? Well no, well I'm sorry, if you, if there's no payment received today, we will have to start taking the contents of the shop away. We don't understand the rent. The rent was due on the 29th of September. On Christmas Day, the next rent falls due. Paul needs a large payment today to keep the business open. 
the owner makes her first offer. If you pay us, uh, 1,000 today. No, I want 3,000 today. You know, it is a short time, how can we do? You know, give us some time, please. Pay 2,000 pounds today, and I'll come back tomorrow for the rest. But the owner is sticking to the offer of 1,000 pounds and wants Kareem to use the money in the till towards yeah. the debt. Uh, I'm paying the 400 pounds on here, and she's going to pay for the 600 pounds today and tomorrow £1,000, and are they more for the next week? No, I want not less today than £2,000. You come to the nearly 4 o'clock now, you know... No, but the rent was due on the 29th of September. Yeah, I know, but yeah. you go to 4 o'clock, until now, I can't uh, ask for the money in, until now, but... No, it must be possible for you to get more money than £400 together. I told you my situation, if you want... <laughs> It's time to apply some pressure. You need to make some phone calls okay. to see okay. if you can get okay. two thousand pounds together. Four hundred pound. Yes, I'm, I can't pay just for the four hundred pound or oh, maximum. I don't bother my pocket how much I got it. Five hundred pound. I'm going to pay now. I'm paying this day on this spot. He just thinks he can fob us off with an excuse. So we'll just sort of start ratcheting the situation up in a minute or two. You yeah, look through the back, Steve. So the back I think it's end. probably just a toilet. Is it? Oh, no, lots of stock. The only alternative is that we take everything away. The technique is that you've got to impress upon the, the tenant that if they don't make payment, that they're likely to lose their business. When you take the, all the courts, we are going to close the shop. I can't pay the rent for the, in the future. We need to impress that upon them to hypothetically squeeze them gently so that they understand that there is pressure upon them and they need to make a settlement. Listen. Yeah. I want you to make a determined effort to yeah, get... Yeah, I some... know. I believe you. It is, Otherwise, it is, it is, sorry, there is an alternative. Yeah, it... We will lock the shop. Yeah, I know, and I know. And then that'll be the end of it. I know, it is, it is your job. Paul stands firm, but so does Kareem. You can accept, you can take the money. Or you don't accept, you take the course. No choice with me. Up to you. Choice with you, because you are boss now. Before I am boss, you are boss now. I know it, yeah. because so is yours. If you want it, you can take the coach or take the money. After you. The team now have a dilemma. Face the expense of emptying the shop or accept Kareem's offer. Paul comes up with a compromise solution. £550 in cash and £500 on a card. £550 on there. <clears throat> 550, yeah. yeah. The balance has got to be paid. Tomorrow, thousand. Will you please not interrupt me? You don't want tomorrow. Thousand pound tomorrow. Yes. The balance within seven days. Definitely. Is that okay? Right. Banking details, Ben. Right. Sort codes. Ready? It's not authorised, then. Should we double check the card number again? Four hours. Four hours. But just when they thought they had a deal... OK. Sale, not authorised, sparkling card. The cards declined. Not authorised, been declined. It has actually been declined. OK, so what would you like us to do? Paul now has to accept what he can get and hope they can sort it out tomorrow. Six o'clock at night, we can't get removable people out. We've got no option but to wing it. Ben tries to work out another solution. The only other option is that they pay the 1500 tomorrow, because they were going to pay another 1000 tomorrow bank transfer. The landlord agrees. She has until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning yep. to pay 1500 yep. into the bank by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. £500 ten, before 10 o'clock, definitely. £1,000 before 4 o'clock. It's taken over two hours, but it's not what they wanted. We've come away with £550 in cash. That's, that's the best we can do. Kareem and the owner have till tomorrow to pay £1,500. So Paul leaves them with an ultimatum. Don't let me down, Peter's or I'll right. be back and close it down. Good luck. <coughs> Thank you. Last December, a property was repossessed in the UK every 27 minutes. 
and one in 20 people missed a vital payment, such as rent or the mortgage, due to Christmas spending. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look as if there's anybody in. No. It's the final run-up to Christmas and a cold and wet winter's day. The team are in Barnet to enforce a High Court writ of possession. Is there anybody in? The writ entitles them to evict whoever is in the house. The tenant named is Karen Ballinger, but the team don't know much else. <laughs> Now the post is still in the letterbox. Although a dog is barking, nobody comes to the door. There is a little chihuahua. There doesn't seem to be anyone at home. So the team start to drill out the locks. Some reason. Hi. Hi. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. We're here to repossess the property. We did knock at the door and obviously there was no answer. Um, well, I've got Slitter working on it and... I'm afraid it's past that stage now. Would you like to open the door? We'll come in and we'll talk about it. Paul, we have contact. Yeah. We'll come. Hello. Thank you. The team were expecting to evict a woman and have no idea who the later? mystery tenant is. So we're High Court Enforcement Agents. We have a writ here to repossess this property. Karen Ballinger we're looking for, specifically. No, she... she um leased it, but, it, but I'm the one who's lived here. You pay her, then, I take it? No, That's they the agent, for me, because I, I suffer from depression and stuff. They kind of... Um, and I was sort of stopping backwards and forwards with family. OK. What's your name? Terry. Terry. The tenant, Karen Ballinger, is actually Terry's sister. So, in practical terms, it means that you've got to leave today. So we would normally give you an hour to get your personal belongings together and then you can make an arrangement with the agent who is with us to come back and pick up the rest of your stuff when you've made alternative arrangements. Have you got family in that round here? Um, I have family, but I don't talk to them. I feel like I'm completely... What are you going to do then? I don't know. You need to get down the council. Huh? You have to get down the council. No, I can't with the dog. I'm just going to get a cigarette. Yeah, certainly, that's OK. Christmas is a time many families come together, but not today. Terry seems to have no one to call and nowhere to go. What we're concerned with is that we get you rolling in these circumstances. Obviously, with it being so close to Christmas, it is essential that obviously we get you to the council as soon as we can. So far as priorities are concerned with the council, probably the lowest on their list, if indeed uh, it appears on their list, is a single male. And then below him again is a single male with a dog. Because it's, cause this is actually the eviction warrant, yeah. it may be that they'll do something where they wouldn't so do anything before. Get a warning about that, you then. don't. There's no, there's no... It's a bit dirty and underhanded then, really. You tell that to the High Court judge who signed it. Yeah, I think they'll have to do that. That's even worse than it, Christmas. I'm an atheist, so it doesn't really matter, but to Chris, Christmas doesn't affect this process. There's a good boy. Paul's concerned that Terry is a potentially vulnerable tenant. What is your actual condition? Um, well, I suffer from um, depression, anxiety, yeah. and um, kind of like, like agoraphobia type thing. All right. So it's like yeah. crowds and... Yeah. The, the agents are worried that Terry could face real difficulties if they don't intervene. Ben rings the council. I'm just concerned about his mental health. No, I need to speak to someone quite urgently, to be honest. Terry? Yeah? Do you have any other social worker's number? Sometimes it helps to speak with people who know the person and who just seem to be getting voicemail. I need just one of your social workers. That will probably help. Ben finally gets through to the council's mental health team. When you're faced with someone who has uh, mental health issues, we tread very carefully because we don't want to do anything that's going to antagonise the situation or affect their health. I want to know if there's any flags where he's a danger to himself or others. 
Right, that's... OK, that's my main concern. Now they've informed Terry's caseworker he's being evicted, the team hope he has more chance of gaining emergency housing tonight. But there's no guarantee. You know, I've got sympathy with you. Christmas is coming, you've been evicted, and nobody appears at this moment to be trying to help you. I mean, there might be a happy ending to the story. I'd like to die. Thank you very much. What I'd like to do is to bounce him between the council and the and the welfare people because he's got nowhere to go. We're going to take you down the council. They're going to do something between them and the mental welfare people. Have you got a bag with your kit in? No, but I'm just thinking about what I need to get from the dog and stuff. Yes. Food if there are dogs in the property, to me, it doesn't register any differently to children. We've got to make provision for the dogs. The dogs are of the innocence abroad and they don't deserve to be just turned out in the back garden and left to get cold or wet. Okay. If you get stuck with a dog, ring me, because if I had to, and I wouldn't say this to anybody, I'll come and pick him up and I'll look after him, because I've got a little dog. You know, in the short term, what I'm trying to say is I don't want you to have any more stress because of the little fella. Terry's packed and ready to go. Paul has agreed to drive him and Coco to the council. I like dogs because they don't shout at you. It looks like it's going to be a cold December night. And with nowhere to stay, Terry is officially homeless. All right, you take care. Cheer out, Coco. There you go, little chap. If the council don't find him emergency accommodation, Terry and Coco could end up on the streets tonight. The bloke's obviously needing a bit of a, a leg up. The fact that on his way through, he's alienated his family, his neighbours, his friends, so the only person he's left with is the dog. <laughs>